Okay. Um, your name and what you do? Um, Reverend Dennis Dillon. I am the publisher for the New York Christian Times in New York City and also the uh, chair for the Door of Our Return, which is an initiative that is really around getting the African children to come on back home to Mother Africa. Great, great. What contribution do you see the diaspora giving to intermediary cities and the development of intermediary cities? I, I, I think it's absolutely critical. When we, when we understand the, the African diaspora from an economic perspective, then we will know that the, the, the Africans outside of the continent represent a spending power of well in excess of $5.7 trillion. That's a whole lot of power. When we understand that power and we measure that power against the, the gross continental product of Africa, which is probably about maybe 5.2 or so trillion dollars, it means that Africans outside of the continent are just as powerful as the continent itself, outside of the resources. So when this diaspora plays a role, particularly in the urbanization of Africa, um, how we help to strengthen cities, how we create economic partnership, and how we begin to work with the, the continent to leverage this kind of buying power that everybody everywhere in the world are taking advantage of, it is time that, that the continent begin to utilize this power. And I think um, what better ways to really pursue that than working with intermediary cities and, and local communities across the continent to achieve those goals. Okay, great. AfriCities is the largest summit of its kind. Um, how do you plan to take advantage of this um, for your organization, for the diaspora? Um, yeah. You're very, very happy um, to, to be a part of this. Very proud uh, for the past two summits to lead the, the, the U.S. delegation uh, to the AfriCity summit and uh, again uh, we're taking elected leaders, black elected leaders who are obviously children of, 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 of Mother Africa uh, back and business leaders back. Uh, so I'm excited and I'm happy just to see the connections that are being made, the relationships that are being created. Um, I'm seeing uh, elected leaders from the U.S. are now adopting uh, cities and communities and counties in Africa. And it is certainly Afro City and this great summit that is really helping to leverage that. And we're now talking about how do we work with some of the other institutions uh, in, 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 in the United States, in the Caribbean, uh, to ensure that, that there is a real partnership going forward and Afro-City can not just be the largest of its kind on the continent, but yeah. certainly um, a global uh, summit that is impacting African people globally. Great. What, what policies do you think um, need to be created around this just to be able to see the African um, renaissance and, and, and Africa coming up and the Africa we want? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and, and a great question, and, yeah. and I appreciate it. Uh, if I were to identify just some of the key areas, I think number one, yeah. um, and I talked about this in the Diaspora Forum yesterday, there has to be a greater commitment on the part of African nations to work to bring their children back home. Um, and, and where policies and legislations are necessary to facilitate that, we need to begin to see that. More uh, African countries need to join you know, Ghana and other countries in, in really rolling out the red carpet for these sons and daughters to journey back home, uh, making you know, citizenship, dual citizenship in this case, easier 
um, providing land and resources, not for free, um, uh, but certainly making these uh, available so that they can come. I really want to get to the day when Africans are not owning timeshares in other parts of America. They're not owning timeshares in Europe, but they're owning timeshares in Africa. They're owning a second home in Africa. So what needs to be done to facilitate this? I really want us to get to the place where at the end of the day, Africans in the diaspora are not just sending dollars home uh, to family, friends, associates, so that they could spend and perpetuate what I call the compulsive shopping disorder that African people globally suffer from, but more so to create the scenario where we're sending resources to buy products and services that we in turn can sell and leverage in the other parts of the world that can facilitate the strengthening of the African economy. And I think that will impact not just on the African economy in Africa, but certainly it strengthens the African economy in Jamaica, in Barbados, in Harlem, in, in Chicago, in Newark, uh, and other parts of the world. Thank you very, very much. Um, that's it. Yeah. Thank you. Bless you.